Here's the follow-up lesson to Daiwa Gaku. Let's say you can play this piece, uh, you know how to approach this piece. Uh, so why a third lesson? Why a follow-up lesson? Well, this lesson is about uh, listening to your flute, because all flutes are different. And uh, they're really not standardized uh, the way instruments in the West or, or the less standardized. So I got a selection of flutes here, and so they, each one is going to ask to be played in a different way. So what I'm looking to do is just play the natural open breathing that uh, un unpretentious. Uh, so when you hear it or somebody hears it, it just sounds right. And so uh, we're not bringing artifice to it, we're not bringing skill, like conscious skill to it, but where we're feeling uh, the, we're feeling the chi, we're feeling the, the essence of the moment. We are integrated with uh, you, the, the environment, with yourself, you're comfortable with yourself, you're not self-conscious, um, you're not trying too hard, you're just being in the moment. So, how can you do that when you're playing a difficult piece or a difficult shakuhachi to play? So, that's what the content of this video is all about. Now, uh, about this open blowing, I've said a bit about it already. Here's a flute. Uh, it's a, definitely a meditative flute, and here it, it plays a C. And that's all it plays, because there are no holes. So if you want to just play the one note, and there's a lot of lure about shakuhachi players reaching to play the perfect note, a uh, note that they feel that someday, if they could play that perfect note, they'd be enlightened. Uh, I didn't have a no-hold flute, so I went to the hardware store, and I made one. It's not that hard. Uh, here it's a Schedule 40 pipe, PVC, polyvinyl chloride, extruded, uh, it's for plumbing, the bathroom, it's humble. And I added a little piece, shaved it off, make it any length you want. You can, if you have a shakuhachi, you probably do, just make it the same size and play that one note. It's very low uh, because it's long, and I wanted that low sound because I didn't have any flutes this long. So um, we're talking about simplicity now. A a very well accomplished uh, Tai Chi teacher named uh, Maggie Newman. Uh, she studied with Ronnie Selden as I did. I came in for my lesson once, and Maggie was there playing Daiwagaku. Months later, I came in for my lesson. She was still playing Daiwagaku. Years later, uh, I came across her again and in the dojo, and at that point, Ronnie said, she only plays Daiwa Gaku. She comes with her flute on a regular basis, and they together go over this piece and perfect this one piece. So I think Maggie has something to teach all of us. Here are two flutes. They're shorter flutes. Uh, these are one sevens. They're not the standard size, but you can use a shorter flute for meditation. And why not? If you look at very old uh, paintings and drawings, you'll see that most of the flutes are short. So uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Now these two, this was made by Chinone. A friend of mine bought this from Chinone himself. Chinone looked around the shop at all the flutes and my friend asked, uh, What's what's the best flute that's been? And what's the, what's your favorite flute here? And uh, regardless of size, price, and this was it. So he brought this and uh, back to the U.S. And so it's been my flute for many years. Uh, it's a nice gift. So I'm going to play this flute. Now this particular flute, of course, is a 20th century modern, beautifully made shakuhachi. It's lacquered on the inside. It's, it's uh, buried in, and smoked to get a very hard, clean sound.
feel this is easy to control, so in a way I'm starting to relax. Uh, yeah, I guess, you know, I, I'm on camera and uh, here I'm playing this music, trying to relax. So uh, let, me, let me see. Uh, when I go to the high octaves, is it easy to handle? So I'm trailing off, just naturally, and the sound is just beautifully going out to infinity. So when I said a hard sound, I didn't mean that the sound was hard. The flute is hard, and the wood is hard. It's less likely to crack, but you can control it very well. It's smooth and slick on the inside. So uh, that encourages me to play the details of this piece, and it relaxes me that I don't have to struggle to get a good sound. Now, I play Daiwa Gaku on my main flute, in number two, in, in lesson two, and there were points where the sound was breaking away, and I said, don't worry, you know, just let it go, and that's very important, so you stay relaxed while you're playing. So, uh, on the other hand, uh, let's just say you have a very easy to flute to play, it plays like butter, and uh, you'll want to perfect this, and so that's what this Flute is encouraging me to do. Now, here's another one. This is my teacher's 1.7. So, same size. You can see it's got the roots on it. It's got bigger holes. And in fact, the embouchure is bigger. So when I play this flute, you're likely to get a louder sound. So, this is also clean, and it's, it's got a better dynamic range. It's encouraging me to play more boldly and, and play with resonance when I get to the higher parts, which it can handle very nicely. So, there's a little subtle difference between the two of them. So how about the part where you drop your head down for the ooh and rise it up again? Hmm, okay. Um, I'm feeling that this flute wants to, like the other one, encourage me to perfect this piece. And so, that's where I am with this. Onward. I'm going to cross-reference some of my videos here. This is the U-flute. This is plastic. It's, it's glass resin impregnated, injection molded, very solid, very accurate, and, and incredibly refined uh, casting of, uh, of a very famous flute and it's not that expensive, uh, but it sounds like plastic. It doesn't sound like bamboo. So what does that mean? Uh, well, here we go. It has a fullness and an ease of play, so that is interesting. It, I feel the fullness that I didn't feel in the shorter flutes, and uh, it's large aperture, so this can really play loud. So it gives me the feeling that I can play this piece softly or loudly, 
And that has an emotional impact, so especially when you get to the climax, you tend to, your energy goes up and then you want to play it louder, it's the climax. So as this piece ascends, the tension builds or the drama builds, So I hear air whisping around, I hear a little roughness. I can tell you about 50% of that is me and uh, I can work on it and really come, come out clean with this. All of those other ones seem to just play clean right off the bat. So uh, you can really uh, play Daiwagaku and be satisfied uh, with, with being this is the flute that is the right flute to play Daiwagaku on for you. It, you can be like that. I can play this flute for an hour and not get tired of it. And of course, classical and modern pieces. Enough about that. Um, I don't sell these flutes. Uh, I'm not paid to sell these flutes either. So at the low end, again, inexpensive flutes. Of course, if you can make one yourself, and you may have, if you buy one of these, these are all over eBay, $150, $200, um, but if they're in tune, okay, you can play Daiwagaku. Here we go. This is making me really comfortable. Um, uh, it seems to have an effect on my nervous system. And it's very light flute. It's rough on the inside. It's not painted. Although I will admit that I sanded it with very fine sandpaper, many grades until I got it really slick on the inside. Although it's a, a rough flute. It hasn't really been polished on the inside. And so this flute uh, is very close to what has probably been played for a thousand years or more. And these others that you just looked at are modern, modern evolution. You know, it shows how it ended up with the plaster buildups, with all the decorative aspects. This is something that's very good for the most ancient pieces like Kyore and pieces that lead you in that direction like Daiwagaku with the open blowing. So this flute plays beautifully with open blowing. Now, Here's where it gets interesting, when the high octave comes along. I like those rough edges. I like when it lost control of it. And uh, that's fun. So it's coming out amazingly well. I mean, this is quite, quite an experience. In fact, I went to a pretty formal concert, bringing all my fancy flutes and my beautiful flutes and playing for people. And then towards the end, I just took this out and it was just as effective. So that's interesting. Okay, down the totem pole from natural bamboo, light bamboo, something even lighter. So this is a PVC pipe. It's just like this one, just fancier. Um, evenly spaced holes. Well, not exactly. These are not even evenly spaced, but these are mysteries about the shakuhachi, which I don't understand. I know this is a one inch schedule 40 pipe and it's the same diameter. I, I know that, but why? The holes have to be just the right size, I don't know. But a lot of tender love and care went into making this flute. And so uh, I didn't make it, but I'd be proud if I had made it. So that introduction, 
how does Daiwa Gaku sound on PVC plastic from the hardware store? quiet and there's no problem with that. So when we get to the climax, when you lead to the climax, uh, where's this flute going? So nice, nice. Um, so there you go. Um, I haven't really been held back by cost or style, whether these flutes were carefully made and cost five, ten thousand dollars or you can make them yourself, uh, with not much skill. I mean, it's, uh, will not interfere with you, uh, participating in this flute meditation tradition. So. Let's go onward to some of the longer flutes. <laughs> 